Welcome to the online service of Knutsford Methodist Church. We might be scattered, but we are together because we have the same heart. For those who don't know, my name is Rev Scott and I've been part of this church for a long time and I've really been missing sharing with you. But we're here to share our common love for the Lord. And so let us open in prayer. Lord Jesus, we often sing the chorus, I will follow you wherever you may go. And we can do that with confidence because we know that you are the most high God. You are all knowing, you are all powerful and you're powerful enough to save us to reach out to us and to touch us in every part of our life. And you are always present wherever we are because you live in our hearts. You are the good shepherd who watches for your sheep, keeps us safe and provides for us. And so you are also our savior who did not shrink from death, but allowed yourself to walk the road to Calvary, to take our place in death 
so that we could be free from our sin, our shame, and so that we could die no more and have eternal life. And so, Lord, you are the one true God, and we will follow you, and we will worship you. And so right now, although we are divided in different homes and different places, we are one heart, and we are people of one way, the way of Jesus. Unite us in worship. Help us to recognize that nothing can separate us from the love of the Lord and from each other, not even COVID. And so let us symbolize our unity today by saying the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. <clears throat> and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The epistle this morning comes from Romans chapter 10, beginning to read at verse 5. Moses writes this about the righteousness that is the law. The person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that is by faith says, Do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the deep, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, it is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the message concerning faith that we proclaim. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. The scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The New Testament reading is taken from Matthew chapter 14, reading from verses 22 to 33. And I'm reading from the NIV. Jesus walks on the water. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side, while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them, walking on the water. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, Tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and, beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me! Immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You have little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? When they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, 
Truly, you are the Son of God. Amen. Today's theme is all who call on the Lord will be saved. There seems to be an unasked question. And when all is lost or all seems lost, people have this unasked question which relates to their fear. When they're feeling bereft or broken or even when they feel their life is a threat. That's when the important question is asked. And what is behind that question? And I've had the privilege of standing with people so many times in a time of crisis. Is a simple little thing. I'm scared. What happens next? 
And the reason is that they would love to have that assurance that what happens next is that they are safe. That God is in the next thing. Now, do you know what happens next? In our story today, it's a very familiar story. We see the story of Peter getting out of the boat and walking on water. Now, what's so exciting about this story is that Peter is such an incredible character. He both shows that he is filled with faith and that he lacks faith in the same story. And that's why I really get him and identify with him. You see, he starts out and representing the journey of a Christian when they step out the boat and say, I want to believe in Jesus. That's when we start our journey and we walk differently. We walk as if on water. And Peter's physically walking on the water, but then suddenly he has these, these inner questions. He becomes afraid. He starts to sink and he thinks that he's in trouble. And it's in that moment he shouts out, Jesus, save me. Now, I don't know what he meant. Was he talking about, Jesus, I'm drowning. Can you stop me from drowning? Or was he convinced that he was drowning and needed to know that Jesus was in the next step? In the story, we know that Jesus does save him and they get back in the boat. But it represents for so many of us when we are in that moment where we feel all is lost, that we want to know that Jesus will save us. He's looking for the assurance that if he does die, that he dies in Jesus' hands. Now, that's the kind of thing that happens to all of us. We come to moments in our life where we have these moments of doubt. And Peter lets us know that it's all right to have doubts. As long as those doubts lead us to Jesus. But what's important is to start dealing with those doubts before they become critical. And Methodism offers us this incredible gift it says, not only can Jesus save you, but it is his desire to save you and that you can know that you are saved and cannot be lost. God wants you to know that you are safe, no matter what happens. God wants you to have the assurance that if you do have to cross over from this life into what comes next, that you cross into the hands of Jesus. He wants you to be free from the fear of death and replace that with the certainty and assurance of eternal life. Our second scripture today gives us these wonderful words. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. And it goes on to say, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Have you called on the name of the Lord? Are you today, as you sit here listening to this message, absolutely certain that if you come to the end of your life, you can know that you are safe? Do you believe in Jesus? Do you believe that God raised him from the dead? Then invite him into your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, I am so scared of what comes next. And COVID is, is an incredible time in the church because it has reminded us of our fragility, of our mortality, of the fact that we could face the loss of jobs, the loss of family and the loss of life. These have become realities. But in those realities, we need assurance that Jesus will save us. There's a song that goes like this. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. And life is worth the living. 
just because he lives. When we invite us, Jesus, into our heart, that's a physical thing. God's Holy Spirit comes and dwells in our heart and gives us the assurance, the guarantee that we are safe, that the Good Shepherd has us in his hands, and that no matter what happens in this life, we are safe and going to the next. I want to share with you two stories. I've changed the names of the two men. These are real stories. These are my stories. They don't always show me in the best light. But when I was a young minister, I was called to a man who had suddenly had a stroke. He was in hospital and he was clearly dying. He was conscious, but he was not able to communicate. Now, the story of this man is that he was an atheist. He was a man who'd given up from God. He'd gone through some terrible things in life and given up from God. And being a young minister still in training, I didn't know what to do. And when, in, when I went in that room, all I could do was sense fear. The man was frightened. It smelled like fear. He was that frightened. And I was frightened too. I didn't know how to reach out to him. And so I said a quick prayer. And I assured the family that I would be there for them. And I ran away. I felt very, very guilty about that. And I can only pray that somebody else was there for him in that moment. Because my failings will never be Jesus' failings. A couple of years later, I was called to a young man. We'll call him Brett. Brett suddenly fell into a coma. I was called. I'd never met him. I went into the hospital. I knew he was a puppy and not interested in church or God or anything like that. And in the bed, I was told that his mind was already gone. He couldn't hear me. He couldn't sense me. They had to restrain him in the bed. He was wrestling. He was in anguish. He was in turmoil. And something in my spirit said, don't let it happen again. And so I took his hand and I said, Brett, I believe you can hear me. I want you to look up and I want you to see Jesus. He's reaching his hand out to you. Take his hand. And I said that sinner's prayer. And when I finished saying that sinner's prayer, he was at peace. Sadly, he did pass away. He lived for another couple of weeks. And in that time, he was never, ever restless again because he found that assurance. So I want to ask you, have you confessed that Jesus is Lord? Do you believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead? Well, then trust him. John chapter 14 says this, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many, many dwelling places. If it was not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will take you to myself, so that you will be where I am. There you may also be. And you may know the way to the place I'm going. And Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except for through me. So I want to ask you in this moment, we're going to pray our prayer of intercession soon. But first we're going to pray a prayer to give you that assurance. And if you can, where you are, go down on your knees or at least bow your heads. Because God wants you to have that assurance today. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we confess that sometimes we doubt. Help our unbelief. Help us to invite Jesus Christ into our heart to be our Lord and Saviour. We confess that we, without him, we are lost. But we would love and we know it is your desire for us to have the assurance of salvation in our heart 
to know that we are safe and death cannot harm us. Let us give our life to Jesus in this moment, wherever we are. Whether it be that you've given your life to Jesus before and you're just feeling doubt and like Peter that you're sinking, or if it's your first moment, invite Jesus into your heart to be your Lord and Saviour and believe it is so. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brother and sister, be filled with joy. If you said that prayer today, you can know you're saved. Now go and tell somebody. Amen. Please join me as we pray our prayer of intercession. O oh, loving Heavenly Father, in this moment we recognize that our world is filled with fear, with doubt, with confusion, with frustration. Not sure what tomorrow brings. Fear of the virus, fear of lost jobs, fear of lost opportunities, loneliness, anxiety and depression. And in that, Lord, you have your church. And today we want to pray for that church. Let us be that church. Because what this world right now needs is hope. They need a light in the darkness. And your light shines in us. So let us look differently at this world. Let us look differently and recognize that you have given us the opportunity to let our light shine in the darkness. And so we want to pray for your churches around the world and for the Christian faith. Let us rise up. Let us go into the world whatever way we're allowed to. Let us share the faith and assurance of love that we have in Christ. Let us be your voice that stills people's fears and shows them how to have faith. Let us be your hand that reaches out and draws people out from that which they're suffering in. Let us be your heart that shares your love for a world that needs to be loved. And so, Lord, help us through your Holy Spirit to reach out and respond to this world, this fearful, broken world, and to bring them home to Jesus. We also want to take a moment to pray for people that we know are struggling specifically. And I invite you where you are to just even put this on pause for a moment and spend some time lifting up the names to Jesus. And so, Lord, we do lift up people like Jeff. We do lift up people like Margaret. We lift up my father-in-law, Arnold. We lift up our broken world. In Jesus' name. Amen.
Folks, it's been wonderful to worship together. What's so important is to use this opportunity to share the gospel. Share the KMC clips. Share whatever you can. That's one way we can go into that world and be the light. So won't you join me in saying the benediction aloud wherever you are. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. God bless. See you online.